It's been two weeks since I've last uploaded a video. I was stricken by the flu and as you can hear, I'm still trying to get rid of some of the after effects. I lost my voice completely about a week ago. Also, I got a warning from YouTube that I would be kicked out of the partner program if my channel wouldn't be able to get 1000 subscribers. It's a good thing that I don't like adverts on any video, let alone my own. Even though I would like the channel to grow up to 1000 subscribers, it is not a must. Having said that, I wasn't inactive. I have wrote the better part of my new book, which I expect to finish this month. Here's a very small synopsis. The current climate and energy conversations are centered around renewables and pledges from countries. But it is obvious that we are failing. Winning slowly in this battle is the same as losing. In this book we are going to shed some light on the arguments used in the climate and energy debate. We are going to consider the arguments from a 100% renewable and a pro-nuclear viewpoint and try to determine what must happen to create a consensus that will help mankind forge ahead without causing too much damage to the environment. I will be addressing Naomi Oreskes, Bill McKibben, Naomi Klein, Eric Solheim and a couple of others in this book, trying to entice them to cross the divide. Naturally, the response of many of my followers would be, why bother? But I'll rather be damned if I do. And that's it for this short introduction to this video. I promise you that I won't make it too long. The Dutch have used natural gas ever since we discovered a huge reserve below one of the northern provinces called Groningen. However, ever since we've started extracting this gas, earthquakes have caused tens of millions of euros in damages. And now there are calls to close the gas extraction down and with success, I might add. The Dutch government decided to close one of the gas fields down, thus hoping to mitigate future damages. However, what should we do now we are closing down the gas fields? One of the national television channels decided to be a mouthpiece for some visionary people. The claim? We can create hydrogen gas using wind and solar power. How quaint! This is one of the easiest arguments to refute. So let's do it. The Netherlands used about 1300 petajoules worth of gas in 2016. This translates into 350 terawatt hours. Suppose we can electrolyze water at 75% efficiency. We would need 466 terawatt hours of electrical input. So that seems reasonable. But how much wind and solar capacity would we have to build to get there? I assume an average capacity factor of 20% in a 50 50 mix. So that's 106 gigawatts of solar and wind capacity. Still not that much, right? Wrong. The Netherlands currently has about 32 gigawatts of electricity capacity, of which only 4 gigawatts is wind, and solar is almost non-existent when considered in a grid context. Also note that the lion's share of our electricity generation comes from natural gas. It is one thing to say we have to wean ourselves off natural gas and I wholeheartedly agree but these people think that having an excellent gas distribution network is tantamount to having to look for an alternative which is again fine hydrogen is a pretty nice gas to use it leaves us with little harmful waste products however creating it is not efficient in all likelihood it would be far more reasonable to first try to wean the Dutch off the use of any gas to heat their homes, water and cook their meals. Start by electrifying that instead of perpetuating the thermodynamic inefficiency of burning stuff. 
Suffice to say, we'll be consuming gas for quite some time to come. If we are going to synthesize it, we'd better hurry up with those high-temperature reactors. They will significantly improve the economics of synthesized gas. And that's it for this video. I tried to keep it short and sweet. As you can hear, my voice is really struggling. I hope you liked it, and if so, don't forget to press the thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And check out my Patreon page if you want to support this channel. I almost forgot I also have some travel plans for uh, the coming months. So on March 26th and 27th, I might be able to visit or to participate in the coming symposium on realizing the value of nuclear energy at MIT, no less. And I'm also trying to get uh, access to the World Nuclear Exhibition, which is in Paris in June. So it's fingers crossed for this moment, because I'm not sure whether, whether it is going to be possible. Um, in any case, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye. We must unite as one, though in voices loud and strong, for the earth and future generations. Now's our last chance to take a stand. Come on, we can. Come on, we can. There's a whole host of other advantages of, of nuclear power I had no idea about. High temperature heat processes, for example, um, you know manufacturing carbon neutral synthetic fuels it started to be clear to me how we can decarbonize not only our electricity sector but the other two-thirds of the energy pie Everybody has their own superpower to help save the world here. Maybe for you guys it's designing the perfect reactor, you know, and for other people it's, uh, you know, singing opera about <laughs> nuclear energy at the climate talks. But everybody has a role to play in this, and the more people that we bring into this conversation, uh, the, the more opportunities that they'll have to excel and help the cause. For vision we need the cause.